Welcome to Seven Trumpets Prepper, and in this video today, we're going to show you how to make a solar oven from start to finish. So let's take a look at it now. Okay, so to begin this project, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take and cut this uh, four by eight sheet of uh, plywood that is being recycled. It's it's been nailed up and used before. It's three quarters of an inch thick, and we're going to take and recycle this and use this for the wood to build the solar cooker and so i'll cut that out all the dimensions that we are going to cut this wood out at is in the video description below you can cut it to that size or you can modify it to the size that you want it um, for your particular needs so i'll get this cut and then we'll go over the dimensions of what i cut now to join these boards together uh, before you put the screws down i would advise putting this loctite uh, part number 5699 gray uh, silicone gasket maker in between it. Um, the reason being is not only putting it on the inside but around the inside edge too is to stop the heat from escaping. Is The reason I would recommend using it is because it's good up to temperatures of 625 degrees Fahrenheit. And ladies and gentlemen, just let me explain to you real quickly that if you do get your hot box to that uh, temperature, uh, you need not worry about the gasket. Um, you need to worry about the whole box because wood begins to gasify at 451 degrees. Um, if you've seen my episode on National Geographic, you know that with the uh, wood gasification. But anyway, this is low odor, um, non-corrosive, uh, low volatility. So I mean, th this should um, this should stand up really good in your box. Okay, so we've completed our box, uh, the rough framing of it. Now disregard this right here and this framing pieces right here. I'll get to that here in just a minute. But now for your bottom. The overall dimensions should be 23 and a quarter inches by 23 and one quarter inches um, as far as what we done for our measurements. And then for two of the sides, you need it to be 21 and a half inches by 21 and a half inches. And then the other two sides need to be 23 and by um, 21 and a half inches. So there you go. That's the measurements as far as that on the sides and bottom. Now, right here, what we're going to do next is we're going to put in a one-by-one one, um, on the inside, and or I'm sorry, a two-by-two, two, and we're going to put that on the inside, and that is going to be the lip around here for our glass to set on, which is going to be Lexan, and we'll get to that here in just a little bit. But right here, this top cap is a one-by-two. And what that's going to be is that's going to be the barrier around this that helps hold the glass in place and set against this. Now once we're done with this, we'll sand this down real smooth right here. And that way the glass sets real good and, and snug against it. And we'll make sure that that sets good and flush because we don't want no heat escaping past it. And then after that, then we'll do the paint work on the inside of this. And we might put some uh, insulation in this and tile later, but just for the time being today, we're probably just gonna do uh, the paint work on it and see what the temperature will get up to today on this segment of the video. Okay, so now we've got the trim around the box and we've got it to where the glass can set in here then be picked up and put back. Uh, we've got some knobs for the glass too, but we'll work on the leg sand here shortly. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take some trim, uh, this one by two, and I'm gonna go around the outside of it, all the way around the outside of the box, just below the lip right here, and that is gonna hold uh, the solar um, uh, covering that's gonna go around it. That's gonna hold that into place that you'll see here later. So I'll do that now, and then we'll take a look at it again. Okay, now we've finished putting the uh, guides on the side of the box now for the uh, solar mount to go on and reflect light into it. I've got this upside down because we're getting ready to do the painting on it. So we'll do the, move to the painting and then uh, move to the glass section. We'll about have this project knocked out. Okay, now we've just finished painting this and we used Rust-Oleum high heat and this is good up to 1200 degrees. Now when you're painting this, you want to be sure to get a very good coat on the inside, along your sides, and especially on the bottom, since that's where most of your heat's going to be. Okay, we're about to cut out our lid, and we're using a repurposed piece of scrap Lexan glass that's 3 8 inches thick. Now you don't want to use regular glass or plexiglass, because they can break, and plexi especially gets brittle after time, so you don't want those to break, and this will allow a lot of flex, and it 
it's more versatile for that. Okay, now we're going to drill holes into our Lexan to insert our screws and attach these knobs. That way you can lift the Lexan out of the stove whenever you need to open it up. And these are 1.1 inch uh, knobs that we're using on here. Okay, we've attached the knobs to our lid and we used a 530 seconds drill bit to drill the holes for the screws and we actually used washers, we used six of them to give this enough space that way you can wear your mitts because you always want to be careful and use your protective equipment and that way you don't burn your hands on the glass because it's going to hold a lot of heat and the leg sand is actually good for up to 400 degrees and that heat can transfer into the metal so obviously you want to have enough room to get your fingers under there when you're wearing some kind of glove okay now what we're going to do is we're going to use these and we got this uh, insulated uh, wrap right here and what we try to do is keep in, in mind in case of disastrous times the things you could actually take out of your home and a lot of this is used around air ducts and heating just like this tape right here it's reflective uh, it, it's used around your AC ducts as well and during hard times you may not have that luxury so you could actually pull materials from that and use that in making a solar cooker okay now what we're doing here as you can see we've already fastened these these are little 90 degree angle braces. You can get these at Lowe's. And what we'll do, you'll measure in four and a half inches from the outside corner up here. And when you come in four and a half, you'll lean that down and you'll screw that in. And then we're going to drill out these holes so that we can actually run bolts through the wood as we mount it. That way, if we want to, we can actually take the reflector off of it. If you want to mount it permanently, you can just go ahead and run screws straight through this. Okay, what we've done here is we've drilled out our brackets. And that's for these bolts to go through. Uh, what we're going to do is put our reflector panels across here and that way we can run the bolt through. And we'll actually tighten that down with wing nuts. That way what we can do is under the wing nut, pull the bolt out and take the reflector panels off. Okay, now for this portion of the build, we're making our reflectors. We've cut our wood pieces right at about 16 inches by 15 inches. Um, you can make them larger um, if you want to. Uh, what we've done is we painted the back side and now we're going to take our reflector material that we put inside the box and we're going to staple this on it and then here in a moment Brian's going to drill through this and then he's going to mount the, the bolts through this and then we can attach it to the box itself. Okay, what we're doing here is we're taking reflective tape and we're going to put it around our edges. This is an exposed edge. Uh, this is what they will look like when we get them, when we get them done. So what we did over here is take take the end of it. We want to make sure it's got some tension in there. It's pulled taut. Wrap that around, and then you're going to take and just fold down the corner. That way you don't have it wadded up on itself. Pinch that down, and then just come across the top and gently curl it around. Pressing this down, and what this will do is this will keep our reflective material from peeling up around the edges and keeping wind and things like that from pulling it off without losing any of its reflectivity that's why we use the reflective tape and uh, we still got two edges left on this one to seal but when it's done you'll have a full reflective surface okay now for this portion of the build we're going to take our reflectors that's just been made and we're going to mount them up here on top of our brackets we're going to line them up we're going to make a mark with our drill to line them up and match them up, then we're going to drill them out. And then we're going to do likewise at the top. We're going to take our hard wire, which we use 3 8 bolts, and when they set and seat into this, it's going to hold them tight into place and we couldn't get wing nuts to go on it so for the time being we're just going to put regular nuts until the wing nuts become available at our local hardware store we'll put a washer over it and then put the nut tighten that down and that's pretty much concludes this portion of the build now as you can see here the way that we mounted our 90 degree angle brackets it gives us a 45 degree angle for our reflective panels Okay guys, so here we have the first test that we've done with the box and it's been a partly cloudy day. 
Um, this has been sitting in, out here for about 30 minutes and the temperature reading right now is 200 degrees so that's not bad for 30 minutes uh, preheat time you're already at 200 degrees now we're going to continue testing this box we're going to do a video later showing some stuff cooked using the box but that's just to give you a general idea right there of in 30 minutes time it's already at 200 degrees um, I want to see it get up to 300 uh, I think that'll take quite a bit time uh, more to cook probably uh, 30 minutes more I'm hoping that it'll be up to 300 but anyway that's just to show you right there a general idea that the box does work and you can obviously cook you some food in it and definitely heat your food back up no doubt about that in the very near future it's going to be extremely critical to have a means to cook your food not only that but with power generation sources being very scarce and many preppers not being able to afford them a solar oven is something you should prepare now and put back because a solar oven even though when trumpets one two and three take place and a lot of the atmosphere will more than likely be darkened as today there's a lot of cloud cover and we're still able to hit 200 degrees with this oven and it's very simple put together that gives you a means to cook food because when the trumpets begin to take place or if some event like Katrina or Hurricane Sandy happen tomorrow you still have a means to prepare you some food and that is going to be critical later down the road. I just cannot stress that enough. So I hope this project is a motivator for you to get this done now while times are good because it's very affordable and it's effective. I hope you've enjoyed this build with us. Now remember, these are materials that can be repurposed from your home during an emergency situation. And it may save your life one day. When power's not there on the grid or you don't have gas or other means of cooking, this right here will give you the availability to cook your food and have it prepared where you can eat a warm meal. So until we see you again here at Seven Trumpets Prepper Channel, we hope you have a most blessed day and Yahushua name.